Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Um, today I would like to tell you about set-based structures. And I claim they're cool. Well, at least sometimes. Sometimes they're actually cool. More formally speaking, I will tell you what a concrete category is. So this is this idea that, well, in, in category theory, we don't really care about sets. But all of us know that in practice, you will see a lot of sets around everywhere. So you kind of need to build that into, into the theory, right? So it would be preferable uh, to not talk about them. But if you can't avoid talking about them, well, you should at least have some theory around to do that. And that's kind of where the notion of a concrete category comes up. Um, so let's get started with an example, right? Category theory is all about examples. So my example is vector spaces. So vector spaces is one of my favorite examples ever, of course. So I have a category of vector spaces, k vector spaces, and I have my category of sets. And of course, k vector spaces is a set-based category, right? Set-based category, absolutely. Every vector space is actually secretly a set as well. If not secretly, uh, it is a set, right? And every linear map is a map. Right? So it's just a map with extra structure, it's set with extra structure. So what can you do if you have extra structure? Well, you can just forget that you have extra structure, which might not be the smartest move to do, but it's certainly very easy. Um, I am very good at forgetting things. I'm, I'm an expert at forgetting. So I can tell you forgetting is not very, very, very hard. Remembering, that's much harder, but forgetting is certainly not very hard. So what do we do? Well, for example, from K, we can go to the same underlying set. We just forget that K has a structure of a K linear space. So we just forget it. For K squared, we can do the same. Uh, for maps between them, whatever those are, we can do the same. We just forget that everything is linear. So we go from K vector spaces to sets. We go from whatever, from maps to set-based maps and so on. The kind of the observation that gets this thing started here is that, well, in category theory, we want to review categories basically as abstractly as possible. But it might lose some information, right? We take this bird's eye perspective. And if we do so, we usually tend to lose information. That's just what happens. It's just built. It's just fact of life. There's nothing, almost nothing we can do. So viewing like k vector spaces, for example, abstractly, um, you can kind of lose a little bit of the information around. So the idea that defines basically what, well, that gives us uh, the definition of a concrete category is maybe we should actually view it well, abstractly. Certainly we should view it with category theory in the end, right? But maybe we should kind of keep a little bit of track of the underlying sets, right? So we should read abstractly together with its underlying set structure. So what we want to do is we want to view this category together with its functor, basically. So as soon as you know the functor, of course, you have this one here built in anyway, right? So you kind of want to view it not just abstractly, but together with its functor. And yeah, and this idea actually works. So let's have a look at another, a little bit more sophisticated, not too much. So I can take my k vector spaces and just explain that we can forget the structure here. We can go to this space here. But I can do the same for other categories, like topological spaces. I can, I, I can just ignore that spaces are topological spaces. I can ignore the open sets. And it's, again, a set-based structure, so I can just forget everything here. Uh, so from top, I can go to forget everything and go to set as well. And well, if you have top and k vect, it's not very far-fetched to go to the next uh, well kind of case. So you can go to topological k vector spaces. These are just well, k-linear spaces with associated k-linear topology, so, so topological k-vector spaces. And now you have quite a bit of forgetful maps, right? So you have two structures on your sets. It's a topolog topological space, and it's a k-vector space. So what can you do? You can just forget everything. That's this arrow. Just forget everything. Just go to set. Or you can kind of forget things stepwise. So you can forget the k-linear structure. You go to top. You forget the uh, topological structures, you go to k vect, uh, and then you can go to set or whatever, something like that. So here's my, my big X category, and I can kind of do all the steps. And all of these are kind of legit operation of forgetting, and all of these are underlying structures um, of top vector spaces. So top vector spaces is based on top with topological spaces. It's based on k vect, so they are k vector spaces, and it's based on set. So all sets, right? So I can, I can, whatever makes kind of what I want to do in practice here, you can do it and it makes sense. 
and whatever you want. So um, we can use this actually to say much more about a top vect than um, we just could by studying abstractly. So maybe we should study top vect with this whole set of associated factors, uh, well, maybe, or just with a single one or whatever, right? So there's some additional structure in top vect which you might want to remember. Here comes another example. Um, category theory lists some examples. So you can also talk about certain category of Banner spaces, so whatever that means, uh, appropriate matrix spaces with some appropriate conditions. And they're again set based. So <laughs> it's a topological space, it's a metric space, whatever, it's a Banner space. You can forget the, uh, certainly you can just as before, forgetting is easy, you can forget the, uh, well, the more sophisticated structure and just remember the sets. Okay, so Banner spaces. Um, that's another functor, which I leave you to work out. It's called the unit ball functor. So you can associate to each space the unit ball of it, which is a set, and you can kind of associate to each map an appropriate map from the unit ball to the unit ball corresponding. And that gets, gets you also to sets. So the unit ball in each of those banner spaces is a set. And so it actually has two forgetful functors to set. And we can do a little bit more, right? Both simplify banner spaces to set, um, but maybe one of them is a little bit more appropriate. Maybe we want to forget, depends with uh, on the context. Maybe we want to use unit ball, but kind of we can keep track of both of them. I don't, um, what I'm saying here is we don't need to take a forgetful functor. There might be other functors which are still forgetful in some way, and we might want to consider them. And well, if you believe in this strategy that writing down enough examples, k vector spaces, topological k vector spaces, banner spaces, already determines the notion you want to write down in getting read theory, well, then here we go. So a concrete category is exactly what you have seen in the previous examples over some base. So this was set. So D was set in my examples or whatever it was. So it, uh, it might have, it could be some different category. It could have been top. In this example, for example, it could have been top or k vect. So this could be D, this could be C, for example. Um, and it's actually a pair. So it's not just a category, but you remember two things. You remember the base and you remember the functor. So it's a pair of the richer category C and a kind of a faithful functor, like, like a forget functor, a certain type of faithful functor from C to D. Um, yeah, and then you have just define what a concrete category is. And you can do quite a few things with concrete categories. I show you a very nice application on the next slide. I'm kind of the obvious, obvious kind of definitions or constructions you could do from here is you can define a concrete functor. So now you have extra data around. Let me explain how that works. So you have two concrete categories, which is a pair, right? It's C and the functor U, or it's C prime and the functor U prime. And let's say they goes both go, go to D. So you would write down this diagram. They both go to D. And now uh, a functor between concrete categories is not just the functor between C and D. So not just this part here, but you also want that this commutes with the associated forgetting functors U and U prime, right? So it's a, a, fun a concrete functor. It's a functor with some extra conditions, as you would expect it, because the concrete category is a category with some extra conditions. And you can then define equivalents of concrete categories, which are given by uh, functors that are concrete functors, the category of concrete categories, and so on and so on. So you have a, a new additional uh, idea around a category theory that you can now play, play around with a little bit. And if you think that sounds a little bit useless, actually it's not. It is actually useful. Um, and here's an application which I would like to mention in the end. So uh, topological space here, my favorite picture of a topological space. Someone has done, someone has uh, illustrated that from whatever it is, glass or clay or whatever, whatever it is. Um, so that a coffee cup is actually topological equivalent to a donut. Anyway, so topological space, actually not a topic, but I just needed a nice picture for the slide. Um, uh, the point is the standard def definition of topological space, and there are kind of quite a, quite a few. Depends what you've seen. You, maybe you've seen the neighborhood definition. Maybe you've seen the open sets definition. Maybe you've seen a closed set definition, a closure operations, some, something more sophisticated using filters or whatever, something like that. Strictly speaking, they all give you different categories because you kind of have different 
techni technically different categories with different way of defining what a topological space is. But you can show, as it should be, that they're all equivalent as concrete categories, right? So they're equivalent, not just as categories, but kind of also as concrete categories, which is captured, uh, which captures very nicely this kind of standard fact that all the usual constructions of topological spaces kind of gives the same result. Okay, um, so let me wrap up. So concrete categories is something we actually maybe don't want to do in category theory a priori, but kind of life forces us to, and in the end we get some nice results anyway. So concrete category is this idea that you have a rich category C and like, like a not so rich category D, and you have a nice functor between them, a faithful functor, a forgetful functor in a certain way, and the pair of C and the functor is a concrete category. So you kind of remember also its underlying base category D. And then you can play around with it a little bit, like defining equivalents of concrete categories, uh, categories of concrete categories, and so on. And you would get, for example, a kind of nice result that uh, explains why all the topological definitions of topologies, all the topological definitions of to topologies, all the definitions of topologies that you ever meet in your life are actually equivalent because they all give equivalent categories and not just equivalent categories, categories that are equivalent over the base, so categories that are equivalent as concrete categories. And I think that's kind of a cool statement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.